All right. Now all we're gonna do is go like the first three, two or three days, first three sessions, we're just gonna repeat and see if he recognizes the same patterns um, of following the float and, and moving out into a figure eight and um, see if he can slow things down. Pretty good so far. through on this part right here and he gets kind of again he just kind of jets through it and everything. So again we'll slow down on leading him through to make the transition. Bracing. things down just a little bit. thing that hopefully you'll notice is, is that I try to use the same kind of cues over and over again. So we, we lead him with the float, 
which he does really good. He follows that. He's so, or, but he's overly sensitive. So that's not necessarily a good thing, but it's a good thing um, over a, a period of time and everything. The other thing is, is that once I asked him to stop, I may lead him up, right? Lead him up. And then I drop my hand like this to say, okay, we're not, I'm not asking you to do anything else. We can pause the moment, process, reward, and then I'll lead him up a little bit more, and then I'll ask him to come out or go over. That's a lot better. Ask him to come to me. I'm supporting that, that cue with the float coming to me. slowing down a little bit. One thing I'd like to talk about for a second is the motions that we're going through with the with the lead line, my presence or my energy, my ask, which is cues. Um, he is slowing down. He's starting to get used to all that kind of stuff. Um, what is it exactly that I do with the lead line itself and the float, right? Is, is that when he's going one direction, You'll notice I have, if he's going around this way, I've got the float in this lead hand right here. This lead hand is your ask hand, right? And so I ask with this hand, and then I pick up the tail end of the lead line, and that's gonna be your pressure. Um, you don't wanna just use this um, automatically. You never want to just automatically go from one to 10 using pressure. You want to continue the ask with this hand and if you see them searching for the answer, 
right? Again, if you see them searching for the answer, there's no need for the pressure, right? If you don't see them searching for the answer and they get stalled, then as I ask with this hand, I kind of start slowly raising the pressure hand. I only want to use exactly what's enough to get him searching for the right answer again. As soon as I see him searching and responding, then this hand comes down. And I may continue to ask, but the pressure has to come off, right? And the ask has to continue. If I were to drop the ask and he still stay in there, then it's a, again, we're conditioning of, well, we're sending mixed messages in the first place in the communication part of going into a relationship. Um, but if I, as soon as he, I get what I'm asking, then the ask can come down as a affirmation of, yes, that was exactly what I was asking and you responded um, perfectly. So then I can drop the ask. And that's for anything, whether you're writing, whether you're teaching them the groundwork, whether you're asking for the feet, you've got an ask and you've got pressure. The pressure can come from the energy inside, may not even need the tail end of a rope or, um, or a, a stick, a driving stick or a lunge whip or any a crop or whatever you want to call these things. Um, it's just an extension of your body. And so we want to ask if we need the pressure, if he's not searching, then we bring up the pressure with the tail end of the rope. If he responds, we can immediately drop the pressure, keep continue to ask until we get where we want. And then as soon as we get what we want or what we're asking, then we drop the ask and go through the same thing, same routine and stuff over and over again. tail end of the rope for the pressure part. All I'm doing is just kind of hanging on to it and use it when I need to. But most of the time he responds to the float and to what I'm asking with the ask hand. So it kind of switched up things up now and he gets um, a little bit mixed up, uh, a little bit frantic because, well, because that's who he is. So we'll slow things down again. Go back to the cues, what he knows. Good boy. Ask him to come forward. And I didn't do this, did I? So ask him to come forward. Here and there. Here and there. And then we can continue to ask with the float. Go back. Come back. Good boy. Licking the lips, saying he understands, and that's good for him. As he progresses, we can do things a little bit, again, in a, a little bit more tempo with everything, but he's not ready for that. So again, I'm asking, well, he picked it up. He picked it up on the energy part and not the tail using the pressure hand. So now he's also kind of, he recognizes the patterns, but right there, I didn't even have to do the flow. He beat me to the punch, so we need to slow that down until I ask. We don't want him um, trying to read my mind. Well, we want him reading my mind, but I'm not asking in my mind to go forward 
um, until I present that. And so we want him to be stationary in place and, so, and, um, and just kind of be relaxed before I go into the ask. And so I may have to slow that down a little bit or stop him and then ask. Hold him with the float. Try to hold him with the float. May have to rearrange my body a little bit um, because he's starting a pattern of running through right here. So I'll lead him up a little bit more from that side to that side. bit better. right there and embraces up. We want to try to change that that posturing and that, that those mannerisms. from his chest or his elbow down straight through his um, hooves. This time he's leaned forward just a little bit. That's a lot better sign for me. Normally he leans back a little bit and prepares himself to get going. And so this is a little bit better right here. Better. And what you see right here, normally I just go like this right here, but we're starting to add a little bit more motion. 
and get him used to both sides of the eyes, both sides of his body. Good boy. A lot better on that side. that jaw because if he's clenched up and it causes tension and that causes a little bit of anxiousness. Good. Better. Better. That time he followed me up on his own. He's getting so much better on that side coming this way than he is on the inside going out. One thing that I'm, my considerations on reason why, why is one side better than the other side? And I think that when he gets up underneath the overhang, again, we talked about this a little bit the other day, um, gets up underneath the overhang, feels a little bit claustrophobic, wanting to jet out to the open side, which is, again, in their minds and in my mind, is, is freedom and stuff. So it jets out towards the free space and it really slows things down going into the little bit more confined space perceptually. It's the same space on both sides, but perceptually going in up underneath versus going outside is different. much better with his legs up underneath him now and not braced backwards. Still kind of um, beating me to the punch as far as going out, but he is slowing down, so I'll take it.
They introduced a new thing going out to the side of his face. Kind of got him a little bit upset. better right there. this side versus the other side. He's already out trying to gout guess me right now. correction because he was beating me to the ask. So I kind of frazzled him a little bit.
better. So this is a half session and I'm going to stop the tape right now and then I'm going to go ahead and do some more stuff in essence of time and, and everything. I don't know if y'all want to see every single little instance, but I'm going to do the same routine over and over and over again. If it takes me an hour or so to get him more comfortable with everything, then that's exactly what I'll do. I've got all the time in the world and um, just be patient. Make sure I'm clear on my ask. Uh, make sure I'm clear as far as watching his body uh, mannerisms and his stance and his his mindset and see how he's responding, responding and everything. And um, we'll just keep adding and adding and adding. And um, hopefully I'll be here in about 15 or 20 minutes. Then I'll cut back on the tape and see where we're at.